Daniel Murphy's career shows the highest of peaks and lowest of lows, from setting the record for most consecutive games with a home run in the postseason, being named an all-star and silver slugger, but retiring a short three years later. This is the story of Daniel Murphy. Daniel Thomas Murphy was born April 1st, 1985 in Jacksonville, Florida. He played his high school baseball at Englewood High School in Jacksonville, where he was a good bat and an average fielder, but did not get any offers for college ball except for one. Jacksonville University was that team, and he eagerly accepted the scholarship. During the first meeting at the university, all players were asked to introduce themselves with their name and their position. Murphy, being a better bat than a fielder, answered the question with, I'm Daniel Murphy from Englewood High School, and I bat third. He had a solid freshman year batting 377, but was not starting. He earned his spot during his sophomore year, getting 31 RBI and batting over 300 again, playing right field and third base to minimize his defensive faults. In his junior season, he was electric, batting 398 with 6 home runs and 55 RBI, on his way to winning the A-Sun Player of the Year. They reached the conference championship where Jacksonville was in dire need of a hit. They had a few runners on and needed to score to win the game. Murphy had suffered a knee injury towards the end of the year and was not able to play, or so they thought. Murphy steps into the left-handed batter's box with a knee brace and hits a ball to deep right center field, coming away with an RBI, and what any other case would have been a double, he reached first base limping. The 2006 MLB draft came around. Not getting a bunch of attention out of college, Daniel Murphy was not expecting a call from the top rounds. The Mets called him in the 13th round and selected him. He had to rehab for the rest of the year but finished off his season in A-ball. He hit 11 homers in A-ball and was promoted to AA. He had 67 RBI and 13 homers, leading to another promotion to AAA. This promotion lasted a total of one day where he went 1 for 4 with a walk. The Mets had placed Marlon Anderson on the injured list, prompting them to call up Daniel Murphy. In his first at-bat of Major League Baseball, he hit a single off of Roy Oswalt. Later in the game, he made a nice catch and threw out Hunter Pence at second base. He finished his rookie year very solid and looked to continue the success. Murphy moved from left field to first base after an injury to the starting first baseman. He then led the Mets in total home runs with 12. Only 12 home runs led the team. In 2010, he hurt his knee in spring training, requiring a rehab stint, where he tore his MCL, which required him to be out for 4-6 to six months. 2011 came around and he was great, batting 320, but suffered yet another MCL injury 109 games into the season, missing out on the chance at a batting title. 2012 was a solid year for a recovery season, getting the second base job and batting 291, but it was just an average year in his career. 2013 was much of the same, with just a little better, having 23 stolen bases. He established himself as a great bat at the second base spot. 2014 was his breakout year, being named an all-star at the age of 28. He had very average numbers for his career, very similar statistically with 2013 with a 289 batting average and 332 on base. 2015 was one of the best in his career, playing first, second, and third base, hitting his 226 double which was good enough for second in Mets history in a 90 win season. He also only struck out 38 times during the course of the year, which is well below half of his strikeout numbers. During these two years with the Mets, he batted 285 with 130 RBI, 23 home runs, 70 walks, and 123 strikeouts. He had a combined 3.5 wins above replacement with a 110 OPS plus and a 301 Babbitt or batted balls in play average. In the National League Division Series, he hit 333, helping the Mets win the series in five games, with the last two games being special. In Game 4, he had a home run to right field over the head of Yasiel Puig off of Clayton Kershaw. Game 5, in Dodger Stadium, he hit a ball off of Zach Greinke in the top of the six on a 3-2 count over the right field wall to give the Mets a 3-2 lead. He continued on into the NLCS, where Game 1 off of John Lester, he hit a shot into the second deck in right field, three games straight with a home run. Game 2 comes around, and once again in the first inning, he hits a ball deep over the fence to right field, this time off of Jake Arrieta. He hit the ball at his ankles. In Game 3 in Chicago, he gets a 2-1 pitch to crush, hitting it over the center field wall, making it five straight games with a home run on the verge of history. Then in Game 4, to close out the series, Daniel Murphy did it again. To a very similar spot in right center field, he has done it. A completely average power hitter over the course of his career hit a home run in six straight games, the only time this has happened in postseason history. He batted 529 with a 185 OPS. He hit a homer more times than he struck out in the series. With this, he was named NLCS MVP. He couldn't continue the success in the World Series, batting only 150 with three hits and 20 at-bats. The Mets lost the World Series in Game 5 to the Royals. During these playoffs, he hit 328 with 11 RBI, 6 walks, and 13 strikeouts. He hit a grand total of 7 home runs. This would have accounted for half of his total home runs that year of 14. Doing this all in a contract year, Murphy tested the free agency market. The Mets decided they did not want to get the best bat in the history of their franchise back and just let him leave. They offered him the one-year qualifying offer, which allowed the Mets to get draft compensation if he signed somewhere else. He did sign somewhere else with the Nationals for a 3-year, $37.5 million contract. 
He started his Nationals career off hot in April, batting 370 with a 580 slugging. He has as many RBIs as he had strikeouts all during that same month. May was especially good, batting 417 with an OPS over 1. 23 RBIs to 11 strikeouts is impressive, especially doing this with 7 home runs. He was voted an All-Star and was in the MVP race, finishing second to Chris Bryant. He won the Silver Slugger Award and had the best war of his career at 4.5. He led the league in OPS, slugging, and doubles. This was his best season, showing that postseason dramatics weren't just in the postseason. 2017 is more of the same, leading the league in doubles, batting way over 300, being voted an All-Star, and winning the Silver Slugger Award at second base for the second year in a row. He was traded halfway through the 2018 season, ending his fantastic Nationals career, batting 329 with 226 RBI, 54 homers, 100 walks, and 151 strikeouts. He established himself in a great few seasons with a 7.1 combined war, 139 OPS plus, being 39% better than the average hitter, which is wild, and continuing some of the success in the playoffs with 8 RBI, 1 homer, and 8 walks, with a 432 on base percentage, he showed his playoff expertise was not just a fad in a few games. He was just a shadow of his former self in his last two years. Batting 269 with an OPS plus of 81, he called it a career at the age of 35 with 12 seasons of Major League Baseball under his belt. After leaving school early in Jacksonville in his junior year, he has recently finished his degree feeling like it was necessary being so close to finishing. He helps out Jacksonville University's baseball team in practices, teaching them about the game and his style of hitting. He now enjoys spending time with his wife, his two sons, and his daughter. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and if so inclined, send it to a few friends or share it on Twitter. Daniel Murphy's story has always intrigued me as he seemingly disappeared after having two great seasons. It was nice to look back and see everything he's done. Thanks for watching.